Welcome back, glad you could join me. Did you know that the Z6 II can take awesome time lapses just like this one here? Now this time lapse was taken early in the morning. I woke up and the scene was just beautiful in front of me. I took a couple of photos and I thought this is the perfect time to take a time lapse. And I just set the Z6 II into time lapse movie mode. I just wanted to show people what the scene looked like. I took a time lapse and that was the result. And this is straight off the camera, no editing involved. I only shot it at 1080p because I feel like I just want to display it on Facebook. But you can shoot a time-lapse movie in 4K. You can also shoot in the time-lapse mode. The video also save the raw files at the same time. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to use your Z6 II to shoot time-lapses. Whether you just want to shoot a time-lapse movie so you're not saving the files. Say, okay, I'm going to record the time-lapse and then I can download to my computer and then share it to all my friends. Or if you want, you can save it in the time-lapse function where not only does it record your time-lapse, but it also saves all the raw files so that later you can edit those photos in Adobe Lightroom. And I also use LRT time-lapse to fine-tune the time-lapse. So I've got the best time-lapse that I can get. Now, the two modes are very similar. But I would suggest if you're shooting the, in a time-lapse mode that you also buy an XQD card so that you can save the video to the XQD card and save your photos to your SD card. Because I found if I'm trying to save it in 4K, then it's really hammering the camera because you're saving the video and you're saving the photos at the same time. And if your SD card doesn't have that write speed, it will just fall over. It'll just stop because it just doesn't have the throughput. So check your SD card to make sure that it's got a very high write speed. Now the best way to shoot a time-lapse on the Z6 II is in aperture priority mode. There's a few things that you have to understand depending on the mode that you're using. There is two ways to set up your Z6 II, like I mentioned. There is the interval timer shooting mode and the time-lapse movie. Time-lapse movie, you're just recording the movie. And in this mode, you've got to be very careful because your settings that you've used on your Z6 II are going to apply. That is something that I'm going to show you that is very important if you're shooting in the time-lapse movie mode. If you're shooting in the other mode, then it's not a big deal because you're just using the movie just to show you what it's like. But then the raw files, you can edit in Lightroom and then LRT time-lapse to get you what you want. Now, I'm just going to show you a couple of clips here between the differences between using Adobe Lightroom to edit the raw files and also what the original movie looked like. Remember, we're in aperture priority. This clip was taken at F11. The white balance was set to natural light auto. The auto ISO, and I'll explain why we have to shoot in auto ISO, was set between ISO 100 and ISO 400 because I was shooting during the day. Minimum shutter speed was set to 1 1 25th of a second. The interval was set to four seconds and I took 100 photos. So this is the in-camera time-lapse. This is what it looked like once edited in Adobe Lightroom and LRT time-lapse. Now this is very similar, only taken about five minutes later, but instead of using the natural light auto white balance, I used daylight and look what it looks like using the daylight white balance. So this is in camera, can you see how warm it is? So you're stuck with that. So this one, because I'd saved the raw files, I was able to adjust my white balance. And this is why I'm saying it's very important to set up your Z6 II correctly. Now I know the first couple of times you're going to use this function, it's not gonna be perfect. Photography is a learning curve. Now the benefit of using the interval timer shooting mode is that you can do so much more with your time lapse. Let's jump in and see how we set these modes up. First, we'll do just the movie mode. So before we go into the menu, I use the eye menu to select my white balance. I've got the white balance highlighted here. I press enter and I'm on natural light auto. For normal shooting, whether you're doing daytime or at night with the Z6 II, and I should mention this also applies to the other Z series cameras. Not the Z30, but the Z50, the ZFC, the Z6, the Z7, the Z7 II. This applies to it. So we want natural light auto. We click OK. I like using natural light, whether I'm doing just a daytime time lapse or 
a day to night time lapse and it adapts the white balance as it's going into the night. So it will make the white balance cooler as you go into the night. Now from here, I go back into the menu. The first thing I want to do is set my ISO. You can see I've got ISO setting 100, but I've got auto ISO controls here. It's set to on. Make sure it's always set to on. During the day, you don't really need auto ISO, but if you get into the habit of setting it to on, you're never going to get caught out if you do a day to night time lapse and your ISO is going to vary wildly. Maximum sensitivity, that's as high as you, the ISO that you want. So on mine here, I've set to 4,000. It doesn't mean it's gonna to get to 4,000, it means that's the cap. If you're just doing an astro time lapse, I would set that cap to 6,400 or even 8,000. Now here we want minimum shutter speed. For daytime, I set my minimum shutter speed to around 1 250th of a second or 1 200th of a second. For day to night, I will set that much lower, especially if I'm going into a full night where the stars are out. I might set that for six or eight seconds. But for daytime, this is it. The ISO is not going to climb from 100 until it reaches your minimum shutter speed. At 1 250th of a second, then your ISO is going to climb. And it's going to climb until it reaches your maximum ISO setting. So those first two clips that I showed you, I'd set my ISO to maximum of 400. So once it hits 400, then my shutter speed is going to drop. And only then will it drop below 1 250th of a second. And it will keep dropping because you've capped the ISO at 400. So remember that the two of them work together. They're like a seesaw. Now, after we've set our ISO range, we go into the picture controls. We click set picture control. And we can see we have auto, standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape. This really has an impact on your time lapse. So if you're just shooting a movie, choose either landscape or vivid because they'll really sort of up the contrast, up the saturation of your time lapse. If you're shooting in the other function, it's not a big deal because you can edit all the photos in Lightroom. But remember that the video is still going to be the same. The one that I shot in Thailand there, I used Vivid because I really wanted a lot of contrast and a lot of saturation in the video, in the colors of the video for the morning. Now we go back into the menu and now we scroll all the way down to interval time of shooting. This is the more complex mode or time-lapse movie. So we click time-lapse movie. We have start, interval. The interval is the time between each shot. Here, that five seconds, you have to count that you need at least three seconds from the time that the camera's finished taking the photo to the next one because it has to write that photo. In daytime, we're shooting at let's say 1 500th of a second or a minimum 1 250th of a second. So having an interval of five seconds is heaps. And as you saw at the start, my interval was only four seconds because I knew the camera had heaps of time. It had three seconds to write because I only had 1 500th, 1 250th of a second. So I still had at least one second of spare time in that. If you want a photo, let's say every 10 seconds or every 15 seconds, because you want to shoot over a couple of hours during the day, then just increase that interval. And if I want to set the interval, I correct the right arrow. And here we can see we have minutes, and then we have seconds. So I'm happy with that. I click OK. Next we have shooting time. And this is a very big difference between the two modes. We don't have shooting time in the other mode. Here, how long do you want your movie to last for? Do you want to go for an hour? Do you want to go for an hour and a half? This is where you set the amount of time that you want your time-lapse movie to run for. And if we just go right here, you can see we have one hour and 30 minutes. If we're happy with that, we just click OK. The next one, exposure smoothing, we just leave it on. Silent photography, we leave it on. Choose image area, it's full frame, always have effect. This is the important part. This is the quality of your time lapse. Here you can see, this is 4K, 3840 by 2160 at 25p. 25p is 25 frames per second. You want that nice, smooth feeling, 25p, will get you that. If you're just wanting to share on Facebook and you're not worried about having a 1080p or 4K, let's say you're on holidays like I was in Thailand, I just shot at 1080p and it was fine. You just scroll down here and you have 1920 by 1080p at 25 and you can click. So I want just 1080p, I click OK. The rest of it, I just leave alone. And then all I have to do when I'm ready is click start. Before we click start, remember that you're cropping 
the bottom and the top because your camera is shooting at 6x4 but your video is going to be 16x9. This is something that some people don't realize is they just frame, they go like, oh, that's really nice. When you're using the moving mode, you can't adjust later in crop where it's going to be cropping. I recommend that before you start, use the movie mode on your camera and choose where you want to frame. If you're in the photo mode, you're just seeing a six by four. If you go into the movie mode, then you've got a 16 by nine. And you can say, okay, well, this is where I want it. I don't want it down here. I don't want it up here. I want it here. And when you're happy with what you've got, then just go back into the photo mode. And that's how I shoot the time lapses. Now, the more complicated mode is the interval timer shooting mode. Everything that I've mentioned about the time lapse movie function of setting your white balance, of setting your picture profile and all that, it counts for that. And the only difference is, is what I'm going to show you here now. We click interval timer. If you don't want to start your movie straight away, your time lapse straight away, you can set a start time. For example, if you set it all up and you want to get away from the scene, or you're saying, okay, well, I want to set it up, but I want to start in like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you can do that. Most of the time, I start my time lapse straight away. The interval is still the same, it's four seconds. But here now, this is the big difference. I can set the number of shots, and this is going to give you your time for your movie. The interval and the amount of shots you take will govern the time that your time lapse will run for. And choosing this setting, as you saw, gave me about four seconds of time lapse. If you want to run for an hour, then you have to calculate saying, okay, well, okay, I want 100 shots. But if I come here, you can see that it's showing I've got 100, I can go 200, 300, 400. And you can see it's showing me that down the bottom here, see the time? Now at the moment, 11.45. And it's showing me that my time lapse was going to run for around 25 minutes. And the more I increase this, the longer my time lapse will run for. So if I click OK, now if I want that interval to be longer, I come up here and watch now the bottom here, the, the time. I click here and I go eight seconds. And you notice here too, look, I'm at 10 seconds. Did you see the time increased as well? So the two of them play. Remember that I no you normally set the interval first and then you set the number of shots. Both of them work together. I like having quite a lot of shots and the interval as short as possible because that will give me a long smoothing mode. That's the way I do it. But have a play. See which one that you like best. So we say okay to that. The rest of it is the same. If I keep going down here, see down here we have options. So we click to the right here, options. We have time-lapse movie. We can also choose the frame rate as well. But now we have the destination because if you've got an SD card and a QXD card in your camera, when you're shooting the time-lapse movie, whichever card that you set has a preference in your menu to shoot first, if you're shooting a time-lapse movie, it'll go to that card unless you swap it over and say, I want to use the QXD card. So that's something you have to think about. You have to remember. Here, I want the movie to be on my QXD card. I don't want it to be on the SD card because that's where all the photos are gonna be stored. So I click OK. Now, I said we could record the movie, but if you don't want to record a movie here, you don't have to. I can come out to off, and here it's not going to record the movie for you. But I like recording the movie because even if I just want to record it 1080p, it gives me the idea that as soon as the time lapse is finished, I can just play the video. I can look at it and go like, wow, this is going to be an awesome time lapse once I've edited my photos in Adobe Lightroom and rendered them in LRT time lapse. So we just click out. Now I'm ready to go. So I just click start and away we go. This, this is a huge learning curve. At the start, you might think that this is too complicated for you, but I just want to show you what you can do in the future. So this one here, it's also set to natural light auto. My ISO range is the same, but now the interval has changed. It's eight seconds, but the shots are still 100. So this is in camera time lapse. Now this is edited in Adobe Lightroom and LRT time-lapse. Do you notice it was just like I was painting the camera up? I wasn't. The camera was fixed because it's on the tripod. But 
in Adobe Lightroom and using LRT time lapse. At the start of the time lapse, I set the 16 by 9 crop at the bottom, and by the end of the time lapse, it was up in the sky. So I had a ramp. So it was just like I was painting the camera without moving the camera. This is the benefit of using the interval time of shooting mode compared to just the time lapse movie mode. This is how easy it is to use these two modes. The beauty about shooting in the interval time of shooting mode is that you've got the raw file saved as well. So you've got all those photos that if you're doing a day to night time lapse and you've got an amazing sunset that just exploded in your face, you go like, well, I've got my movie, but I've also got the raw files saved and I can go back and edit some of those raw files of the amazing sunset at a later date. This is a day to night time lapse that I took last week when I walked out and I could see we had a mackerel sky. Watch this time lapse. See the sky, look at it. The clouds are just streaming through. It was just an amazing afternoon. And now here comes the sunset. It just went and it just exploded. Bang. Now here's the same time lapse edited in Adobe Lightroom. Can you see the difference? I'm able to adjust my white balance, adjust the shadows, adjust the highlights, adjust the exposure. Now I know when you're just starting out, you're like, okay, that function is just too complicated for me. I'm just showing you the interval timer shooting mode. When you get more proficient in shooting a time lapse, you can use that mode. If you're just wanting to say, well, I'm just wanting to shoot a time lapse of the late afternoon sky, or I'm on holidays, and photos are great, but photos are just a static time, just that split second in time. A time lapse shows you what the whole environment looked like. And this is why I like shooting time lapses because it gives people a view of what I was viewing that afternoon or at night, what the scene looked like around me. I was in the mountains in Thailand and we had this beautiful fog clouds rolling in in the mornings. You just take a photo and they go like, oh yeah, that's nice. Then show them a movie, a time lapse. They go like, wow, look at the clouds just rolling in. It's just amazing. You can show people and they will have that feeling just like you had that morning when you saw those clouds rolling in. I hope this video has been of help to you of how to use these two modes in your Z6 II. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your photography, enjoy using your Z6 II or your other Z cameras. I'll see you next time.